Knowledge is power. Make an impact by learning more or hire us to do it for you. Let us focus on what we do best so you can stay focused on what you do best. Find all of our options under services, one-to-one -one training, subscription-based training, or accounting and business consulting. Previously on Nerds Blog, we took a look at owner contributions, shareholder contributions, and the like. And when we took a look at that, we looked at different types of things you could contribute like cash or inventory or property. Distributions are the opposite of contributions, right? Instead of putting value into the business, we're taking value out. But pretty much it's only ever going to happen in the form of cash. You're not going to really have a distribution in the form of inventory, right? Um, and you're probably not going to distribute equipment to shareholders or Owners, it pretty much happens in the form of cash always and only. Very rarely happens than anything else. A couple important points that I mentioned in the write-up, especially with respect to distributions and S-Corps. Um, you have to be more careful about distributions with S-Corps because S-Corps could be subject to capital gains taxes. Or I should say the shareholders in the S-Corps could be subject to capital gains taxes if cumulatively their distributions exceed their cumulative share of net income over the years. So uh, safe bet with S Corps is to just put all that kind of activity uh, as loans to and from the business between the business and the shareholder. Don't mess with the equity section. Next thing also important for S Corps and distributions is they have to be in proportion to the shareholders ownership. So if you have two or more shareholders in an S Corp and they're 50 50 owners, their distributions have to equal. If, they're, if one has 80% and the other one has 20%, then, the again, that those proportions need to be maintained in their distributions. The idea is if it's truly a distribution, then we're like, like a big – you think of a big public corporation that pays dividends. That's what a distribution really is. You're, it's like paying a dividend out to the shareholders. Small businesses that are S-Corps rarely really treat, treated or see it that way. But that's really what it's supposed to be. So it, with the S-Corps, the rule is you got to maintain that ratio. If you have an 80% owner and a 20% owner, um, and the 80% owner has taken um, 80 grand out, then the 20% owner can take up, you know, well, has to have also taken 20 grand out, so that the total of their distributions is in proportion to their ownership in the corporation. Important, important, important. I got nailed on that years ago before I knew it. That's how I learned about it, um, because somebody's CPA was actually paying attention and said, hey, this isn't right. And I said, yes, it is. And they said, no, it's not. And I said, yeah, all right, I'll stop. Anyway, um, so important lessons to be learned here. So when it comes to taking distributions and how to do the accounting for them, this is what we're looking at. So you might remember from our um, equity, our general equity setup video, <clears throat> I set up capital accounts for Matthew and myself. And uh, we each earned, uh, well, the company earned $1,000. So we each got half of that, right? Because we were 50-50 owners. Let's uh, run this back to uh, today. Mm. Okay, so we have a company with net income. So let us just take some distributions. Let's say Matthew and I each take a check for uh, $250. We just say, you know what? Party time. We made our first $1,000. We're going to take $250 each and go to Vegas. And we'll just about be able to pay for the airfare to get there. So uh, payee is going to be Seth David, right, for me. That is me. Um, and we're going to pay for this out of, it's an iBank, right? Let's go run the balance sheet. Make sure we're using the right account here. Um, there is no money. Let's receive the payment from our customer so we have money to do this with. <laughs> uh, receive payment. And uh, always right was the customer. Okay, and today will be the day. We'll get paid on this invoice. We'll deposit it into iBank. All right, much better. Now we can actually write checks, right, or expenses. And this is going to be, and again, this is where, if you remember from the video on equity when I was naming the accounts, this is really helpful because I can just type Seth, and there's all my accounts. So we're taking distributions, right, 250. Uh, we're going to do this on today's date. Save and new because now we got to do Matthew, right? Matthew Fulton, set him up as a vendor, and we'll type Matthew, 
distributions, 250. Okay, and that is it. But now I want to take a look at the balance sheet and see what that looks like, right? So now initially it looks like we have negative equity, but that's because we're at the point in the year where we haven't distributed the net income amongst our capital accounts. So it's okay, right? Once I get past the first of the next year, you know, we have that distribution booked. So let's do that just so you can see what this looks like, right? We'll just change this to 2020. Uh, 10520. Run it. And so this is where you can start to see how this actually takes shape very nicely because now you can see we've each cumulatively earned $500 from net income. We've each taken out 250. So Matthew's total capital in the company is 250. My total capital in the company is 250. If we're an S Corp and we're 50 50 owners, we are in perfect compliance. So that is pretty much everything you need to know about distributions. Not a whole lot of complication to this. The only other thing I want to mention, because this comes up a lot, came up years ago when I did, you know, the comparable subject matter in QuickBooks Desktop, is people ask, what about closing these account balances out? And my answer is, you know, years ago when I was asked this, I did it. I showed you how you could close out these capital balance all out to retained earnings. And once in a while, frankly, to my shock and dismay, I'll get a CPA asking me to do that. And I don't want to do it. It's not the right accounting treatment. The whole point here is to keep a permanent record of all the activity in our respective capital accounts. So you'd never want to close this out to retain earnings. But some people, as part of their closing entries each year, uh, want to do that. I guess you could say it's like an old, maybe even it's fair to say bad habit. Um, they want to just close out all the equity, all to retained earnings. And then they have no useful information even for the tax returns, because they got to do K-1s for each shareholder. So I would, well, I, maybe that's the answer. Maybe they want all the prior year stuff out because the K-1s need to be based on the current year. So maybe it's for their own selfish reasons so they can do the taxes more easily. But as I mentioned in, I think, the equity write-up, you know, the one that was generally about equity, not contributions or distributions, you know, there's a bigger picture at play here right? Especially as the owner of the business, your CPA only cares about doing a tax return, but you as the owner of a business have a business to care about, right? And that business may need investment or it may need loans from the bank. And so these financial statements that we're putting together as we record your financial transactions paint a very important picture and it's important to keep that picture intact. And if I close out your capital accounts to retained earnings, we lose a very important and good chunk of that picture in the equity section of the balance sheet specifically. So don't do it. Just fight the resist the urge to close out your capital accounts to retain earnings. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. As always, if you have questions, concerns, comments, feedback, post them. You know where to post them. You know how the internet works. Post your comments wherever you happen to be watching this. If you're on YouTube, post it there. Or I always put a link in the video description on YouTube that takes you right over to the blog post. You can post your comments there on our website. And then while you're on our website, you can browse all the other amazing content that we have. Of course, if you want my help setting this up, fixing it up, cleaning it up, that's what we do for a living. So reach out to us. Give us a call at 866-945-8070 or email us, fill out the contact form. It's really easy to get in touch with us. And we're pretty good about getting back to people most of the time. As always, I hope you had some fun here, learned something along the way. I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day. And I look forward to seeing you on the web.